And as um, I'm recollecting with you, uh, while you're playing tennis, uh, you start the game by serving, huh? Yeah. Serve. So that serve, when you translate it in Hindi, it becomes seva. So <laughs> now this seva legal aid project has become a part of your focus. Um, tell me uh, how this idea came about and um, do, you, do you think uh, there is uh, need of these kind of projects for immigrants here? Well, I, when I moved to United States about 10 years ago, I saw this was a tremendous need for the immigrants. Basically, America is an immigration-friendly country and it offers a lot of support to people all around the world who are oppressed and that's been the real America. So, but when people come here to adapt to the US laws, they find it very difficult because they've either spent 40 years in their country or a large amount of time in the other part of the world. So when they come, it's very difficult for them to understand the complex laws of the country. When they come, immediately the first need is immigration because that itself takes years of their time. Sometimes it's difficult to understand an immigration person because when he has trouble, he's never able to be normal. He has first of all to see whether his status is correct. He has to keep upgrading his status and many times he does not have work permit to work. So that all has an effect on his personal well-being. So if you understand the laws of the country starting from immigration to any other issue which affects your normal life, it can be a great plus. So I noticed that in this country we have a lot of uh, people who help people after they are in trouble. But before uh, running into trouble, that is called preventive. So uh, Seva Legal Aid tries to go towards that. Actually Legal Aid is one of the projects I have, but Seva is the bigger banner under which I try to help people. So more than a lawyer, I've now become a counselor, an advisor in various areas. And since I have 25 years in experience in immigration, I've also done criminal law, I've also done family law. So I try to reach out across to as many Indians as possible. And gradually this has become uh, all over for many other communities like China, Fiji, Afghan. I try to reach out to as many communities who are immigrants here in the United States. Now going uh, back to Seva Legal Aid project that you have and uh, we in general um, have attorneys uh, sharing all these informations that you would probably share through uh, uh, these uh, different uh, programs and workshops that you are conducting. So what is the difference uh, for uh, someone who is watching you at uh, this time through ITV uh, and some of them uh, cannot afford uh, the fees of the attorneys um, and that also becomes a hindrance for them to go out and uh, reach for uh, the professional services. So do, do you do it on a concessional basis or there are some free services that the Seva Legal Aid is uh, offering for some of the immigrants who need it? Well, so far Seva Legal Aid is completely free because it is basically advice oriented. We do not do the case for them, but we give them the right advice so that they follow. After that, immigration is pretty simple. You have to go online, you get forms. Once you are told what to do, you just have to download a form, fill up your own correct information and file it directly. You do not need an attorney to file immigration forms. You do not need anybody. You can file it yourself provided you know which forms to file, how to file. This is what I try to teach in immigration and similarly, the whole concept of understanding the law is most important. Immigration is such a thing, if you go on to the INS, you will understand that they are very happy if a person directly files his own paperwork. This is the basic reason I set up SEVA. My whole object was so that the people go only to attorneys when there's a complicated case, so they've got stuck somewhere or they need, uh, you know, very, very complicated issues have come up. But otherwise, as a filing strategy, you can save a lot of money by just understanding it yourself, going on to get the forms. And USA is very user friendly in all these issues, not only immigration in different laws. Mm -hmm. But we just have to have workshops, educational workshops to make people understand the different laws. For example, if there's a driving law or there's an insurance law or there's a patent law, what we try to do is different workshops on different laws where we have experts come and discuss it with the public. Each of my workshops, I've had over six, uh, 600, 1000 people attending each and every workshop. And then they have questions after that. They email me regularly. I answer about two to 300 emails uh, a day, my where God. I get people from all 52 states of United States. I answer questions from India. And 
before 24 hours is out, I have replied to all the emails because I carry a Blackberry where I get all my emails and I answer them every morning personally. So I'm available on a 1866 number, which is pretty much uh, a toll free number United States. And then I answer emails. So this is not just me personally, I'm trying to take the help of so many other attorneys. I've had about 40 people on my board who are distinguished in different areas of their own. So all of them are available for advice. So we try and reach across to common man to see that he doesn't spend his money wastelessly, effortlessly. And he tries to learn the law in the bargain. I run an immigration company also incidentally, which is IBS Worldwide, where I provide very, um, very, very nominal cost for the same offices, which uh, I have in California and I cater to all the 52 states. I'm trying to bring it to the doorstep of people where it is very reasonable and people can afford it. And after doing that, they can do things on their own. So the workshops uh, which are funded by me go through all this process of making law easier and making common man understand law. Because my ba main concept is law is for you, not only for the attorneys in the books to interpret. Law is affecting you and me as a common man. So we should understand it. Mm. I think after a while you outgrow your, uh, your nature as a lawyer or something. You become more of a counselor, an advisor, a person who tries to do community service as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, community service, broadly everybody uh, who is offering services is probably doing and the spirit is uh, a little bit different here and there. Um, now the, this question is more like an opinion which people form when you are uh, probably sailing on two boats, one professional, another service and if both uh, these boats have similar nature as in your case you are an immigration attorney as well as the service that you are offering as a non-profit uh, is also <coughs> related to immigration. So people see uh, it as if you are making use of the non-profit organization to kind of uh, take advantage for your professional. Do you? I don't feel uh, offended by that. Basically because Seva Legal Aid has more than immigration. Immigration is one of the subjects. We have held workshops in insurance, we've held patent law, criminal law, like I'm doing a seminar now on non-resident marriages. Because I write a regular column for the Indian Express right now, which is on Indian law, because I'm an expert in Indian law. So I write on all issues of Indian law, which is like dowry, which is section 498A, criminal cruelty. So we do seminars on every area of law, which includes corporate law, which includes incorporation in India, incorporation in the United States. So it covers law as a subject. Immigration is only a passport to one of the countries that you have. So that's the beginning point. Although the two are, you know, Seva Legal Aid is a very large platform. And that is something I dreamed when I was just about maybe 13 or 14 had started my career. The whole aspect I had was that I could one day afford money to do this on my own. So today, if I have money to do this, it is going to do benefit to society. And anything that benefits society, I would not not uh, listen to anybody. I would keep on doing the good work. That's all I think I would like to do. We would also like you to continue to do good work. <laughs> and for your good work, uh, you were also given a uh, community service award from Vermont Mayor Bob Weserman. And when these kind of awards come your way, um, do they add responsible uh, ability, uh, type of a feeling? Um, it's an encouragement, um, but mainly what is uh, the real source of satisfaction for you so far uh, as far as your service-oriented activities are concerned? Well, if you really ask me, I feel most happy when I see a smile on my client's face. I try to go beyond just a paperwork for them. I literally enter their lives. I try to see what can make them more happy. Ultimately, our whole uh, ambition is to make the other person happy so that he has what he's come to you for, he's received it. Many times I find a client talking to me, he's telling me his story, but I could sense beyond what is he really looking for. I try to achieve that and that's what really makes me happy. So every new person who comes to me and has an issue or a problem, I try to be as close to possible as resolving that problem. That's what I love doing and when I see him happy, successful in life, that gives me all my encouragement and awards make me more and more humble every time.